Okay, before we jump into the 3000 gallon, I just want to thank everybody uh, for their comments from last week's video where they recommended uh, good online places to purchase fish from. Uh, there was a lot I'd already knew about. There was actually a lot I didn't know about. And there was some that I did know about, but they've changed a lot. And that's actually where I ended up ordering from uh, two weeks ago, the wet spot. So I've known about them forever. They've been known for having an amazing selection, but a long time ago, their purchase thing was kind of weird. I think it was like you sent them an email or, you know, with what you want. It wasn't, it wasn't like a good online store. Well, that's changed and uh, it's an awesome process. Now, the online store is great, the communication is great, and most importantly, the fish came and they all came healthy and they all came packaged well. And uh, after two weeks, they're doing great and they're in the 220 flooded forest behind me. So what that means is all the support fish are there. What's coming next for that is the discus. So coming pretty soon is going to be a big update on the flooded forest tank behind me. But for today, we're gonna jump into the 3000 gallon. It has been a while, and as you saw from the thumbnail, <laughs> a mistake was made. And uh, well, let me tell you what happened. So if you remember the last time you saw the 3000 gallon, it had the cyanobacteria in it. And so I used a medication called erythromycin, which is uh, meant for healing fish, but it has a side effect of it kills off cyanobacteria. But the key is, is when you kill it off, you gotta do a huge water change because whenever you have uh, dead material in the aquarium, that's gonna fuel, that's energy, right? That's, that's gonna fuel nitrate, it's gonna break down, right? You gotta get rid of it or you gotta process it some way, right? So I didn't do that. And what ended up happening was uh, a massive outbreak of hair algae, as, as, which is good because that's what you want to happen. Algae basically covers those unusual events, you know, so something happened, there's a, a massive, you know, influx of, of new, uh, uh, you know, resources within the aquarium, nitrate, phosphate, all that, to be broken down, so algae breaks it down. But it's unsightly, right? Uh, it's not what you want, uh, so, you know, you gotta correct it. But it's good, though, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna show how, I'm gonna do a water test, I'm gonna show how it didn't actually inf impact the quality of the water. That's what the algae came in and saved that from happening. And then I'm also gonna show you the steps I'm taking to get rid of it naturally. And also we'll take, again, looking at the water quality, uh, it's been 11 months, no water change on there. So let, let's see how that shakes out. We'll take a look at the tag, we'll take a look at the water tests, and then we'll also talk about what's going on with the new tops and uh, what that's gonna allow us to do. All right, let's get into it. All right, it's definitely been a while since we've looked at the 3000 gallon and uh, it has been in cruise control mode. As you can see here, uh, it's early in the morning, the lights are just coming on, not all the lights are on. We have only one of three sets over here and I think over here we've got uh, a couple going. But uh, yeah, you see algae all over the glass. You probably see uh, some hair algae in the back there, but uh, gonna go over and explain all of that and we're gonna give it its spring cleaning and it's it's a once a year water change. Uh, we're gonna test the water to make sure that uh, everything is good. All the indications are that it, are, but, uh, that it is, but uh, we're gonna test it. We're gonna talk about some new additions to the filtration equipment. We're gonna take this big scraper on a stick, get rid of all that nastiness. And uh, yeah, we're gonna rejuvenate the whole 3000 gallon, get it ready. Uh, for another good year and also start working on the tops. So let me uh, let me start scraping and uh, testing and then I'll see where we're at. Okay, so as you can see uh, from that first segment, uh, the glass has been cleaned off and we can actually see inside the aquarium and talk more about what's going on inside the aquarium. So over here is probably the best example of where there's still a bunch of the hair algae and you can see how nasty that is but the thing that uh, I wasn't able to show you is that when this first occurred it was actually 10 times worse and you might be thinking how is that possible it looks so bad right now but it was <laughs> and uh, I haven't done anything in terms of there's been no water change and I haven't uh, gone in there and physically cleaned anything off but I have taken steps to improve the situation so what have I done so we all know that any, every fish keeper knows that all that substrate, all the plants, all the walls of the aquarium, all the rock, that's part of your filtration system. It is covered in typically aerobic bacteria. So what you need to keep that aerobic bacteria colony as large as possible is you need to have 
lots and lots of dissolved oxygen. So, you know, we have those pumps in the back that are, that are pushing across the surface of the water and that's creating dissolved oxygen. But when you really want to spice up or juice up the filtration, uh, the bacterial filtration in this massive living bed of bacteria, you got to introduce more dissolved oxygen. So that's what we did. On each side of the aquarium, I added massive amounts of dissolved oxygen coming in through uh, air pumps with diffusers. So there's one on each side. And so we have massively cranked up the amount of dissolved oxygen that we're putting in the aquarium. And over three weeks, it took hair algae that went all the way from those plants to the surface and brought it down to what you see right now. And nothing else has changed. That's the only thing that's happened. Now, what I do plan to do is not in this video because I want I to show how it is today with the only thing we've done is adding the oxygen and obviously cleaning off the glass. But, uh, but we, what also what happened is we let the algae burn off those nutrients. We let it eat up all of those nutrients. And then now we're using the bacteria to break down the algae and process it. But we're gonna, so that's stage one. But stage two is I am going to do the big once a year water change for the 3000 gallon. And uh, then we're gonna, you know, of course, we're gonna leave the oxygen in there, you know, dissolved oxygen with the diffusers and the air pumps. And we're gonna see what that does. We're gonna see if we can take this hair algae all the way down to nothing. And there's gonna be any, no physical cleaning or anything like that. It's, we're just gonna try to use nature's techniques uh, to get that done. Uh, and another thing with the dissolved oxygen is that we all know that plants release oxygen and uptake carbon dioxide, but they also require uh, oxygen as well. And by increasing that oxygen in the water, that is gonna increase their metabolic process. All right, so beyond all that, lots of stuff going on with the fish. You probably saw the Oscar back there chasing people off. And well, the Oscars are at it again. They've got a nest going and they're breeding again back there. And they've decided they want to put it in the middle of the aquarium this time. So as everyone goes left to right, they, he, the, the male Oscar chases everybody. Um, so you can sort of see most of the fish are staying over on the right hand side, <laughs> you know, just to avoid getting the business from the, uh, the male wild Oscar. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, another thing going on is with the uh, Atabapo pike. So they've been squabbling a little bit. Um, I'm not sure if, if it's just they've gotten, you know, larger and there's a little competition. It's nothing too crazy. Just a tiny little bit of surface damage on the other guy just from nicking each other. Um, for a long time, they never, they never bothered each other. Um, and like I said, it hasn't been too bad. This guy, he's getting a little nicked up from it, but he's also the one who's been instigating it. He's also been instigating it against uh, the, um, the peacock bass, the Oscar, and uh, my uh, lenticulata pike over here, <laughs> who's currently fighting with the, uh, the true parasiclids. Uh, not really fighting, but they've been sparring uh, for this spot over here. They knocked over this piece of wood and they all like hanging down there. And uh, for the longest time, the parrots had taken it, but then the uh, lenticulata came over and pushed them out. And every once in a while, they make an attempt to get it back. But uh, as you can see, lenticulata pike has grown uh, big time. He is, man, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm gonna say maybe 14 inches or so. He, he's gotten he's gotten big. Uh, so he's not really taking anything from uh, these guys. Even though the true parrots, they're, they're no joke. They are uh, large fish, but uh, I don't think they're gonna get that spot back from him. Uh, and the other thing uh, is the Zebrina pike. Pretty much, I feel like that's a maxed out Zebrina pike at this point. You know, three years old, uh, very thick, and about mm, let's let's be generous and say 12 inches you know definitely not more than that you know somewhere between 10 to 12. Uh, so very nice sized pike amazing temperament and also amazing that nobody bothers them either i like that they hold their own but they're also not aggressive it's nice to have some of that in an aquarium with so many aggressive fish and we see the other oscars these were the smaller ones uh the, the second generation of oscars and they've gotten big now which is cool as well and also, they, they do a lot better now of holding their own with the Wild Oscar. He used to dominate those guys pretty bad. Um, again, not bad like they're getting damaged. You can see they're all in perfect condition, no nicks or anything on them, but bad in the sense that they were always sort of pushed to the side. They're much better now at uh, holding their own, being where they want to be, hanging out. So, because uh, the, the Wild Oscar, he paired off with the albino. You can see him back in the nest back there. So, um, you know, he pretty much leaves these two alone. 
And the other thing, <laughs> as we can see here, this is my original peacock bass, the Orinoco peacock bass. And now we know that we have the two other peacock bass. One right back there and the big boy over here. Now these were sold to me as uh, Orinoco peacock bass, but I think it's pretty clear at this point that these are Tamensis peacock bass. But I'm gonna give the vendor who sold these to me a break because when they're young, you can't tell the difference. And I couldn't tell till I owned the fish for about a year. So I am definitely not gonna dig them for not being able to tell. And I don't doubt that they were probably sold to them as Orinoco anyway, so you really can't blame them one iota but it's okay it's a humongous aquarium and uh, even though Tamensis bass get large i can certainly accommodate them and they look beautiful so i am i am not concerned about that at all uh, i'll be ha i'm happy to have these guys in here uh, and they get along well with the orinoco so there's no problems there and you get a different look uh the, the female over here so yeah they're they're beautiful and uh you know even though it's, this is one of those ones where it's not what I ordered, but it worked out because I'm glad I have them. Uh, it's nice having the, the different variants anyways, rather than say just three Orinocos. And then the rest of the fish here, the two parrots, they're doing great. Um, really just same old, same old. I expect them to start breeding again once I do the water change. Pretty much when you add back that cooler water, you're just going to trigger it with those guys. And then lastly is the Severum, the gold Severum in the back. Um, I did lose a fish. I lost the other Severum. So uh, this guy has been by himself. And whenever I get a chance, I'm actually going to fish him out of here, catch a net him out of here. And uh, I'm going to put him in the 750 gallon uh, Amazonian Islands Aquarium because there's other Severum in there. And I feel like this tank is a bit on the aggressive side for him. <laughs> you know, see, like I'm talking about right here, you get, you get this kind of action going on, you know. The Severum, he doesn't want any of that. He doesn't, you know. He doesn't need to be in here with these big peacock bass and big pike cichlids and everything. He needs a little calmer situation, you know? So we're gonna get, we're gonna get him that uh, when I can catch him, that's no easy thing. And I can see them back in the caves there. They're really hard to see. There are still the two Lima shovel nose. Uh, they're quite the oddity to me because they have gotten big. I mean, they, they continue to grow and grow and grow. I mean, they're three times, four times the size they were when I put them in here but they never come out and swim out here. They're just always in the back, always kind of in the caves and stuff. So uh, it's the craziest thing with those guys. I would definitely, I mean, hopefully one day when they get, you know, their full max size, they'll be out and about more. Uh, I, I don't really know uh, what's the situation with those guys. But so that's the, the deal with the fish uh, and what's going on with the, the, you know, the algae and the, the overall aquarium. Uh, now, the other thing is, is, the the new tops so these are the bars uh that i've worked on that are going to be supporting the middle of the uh tops in the aquarium they're going to get ready to get painted here pretty soon but uh let me take you around back and i'll show you where these guys are going and what it's going to do so as you can see right now the tops they go all the way six feet from front to back on both sides and uh for one thing they buckle in the middle and the other thing is that I can't get them on here as tight as I want them to get them all cut and fit around and over here so I can get air one in the aquarium. I need to get the tops all situated for that. So what's gonna happen is these new bars I built are gonna go across the middle all the way over to the side and then from this middle all the way over to the side over there. And then these tops will be cut in half and they'll be positioned where they lay on the inside that, that cross brace so I can have them on here much more rigidly and then there'll be uh, bars in the back that also go across uh, to keep the back. You won't be able to push it up like this. Um, and I don't think I need to do the same thing for the front, but I could if I need to, but I'm gonna start by just doing the back and then having the tops cut across with the middle. And so what that's gonna allow me to do is finally get arowana. Cause as you can see, even though there's some big fish in here, I mean, look at this, this entire side right now is empty. They're all expecting to get fed. So they've come over here and even with most, all of them, well, a couple of them just went over to the other side, but you know, it is, uh, it's not full. There's plenty of room for other fish. And uh, it's, it's uh, once the tops are on, it's gonna be time to add those other fish. But for now, let me go ahead and do these water tests and let's take a look. Uh, you know, we're gonna do the, we got the master, the master kit here. 
and uh, then we got calcium and phosphate. So I'm gonna run all these tests and then we'll take a look and see what these values are, keeping in mind that it's been 11 and a half months, no water change. So we'll see if my massive sump filtration and all my natural biological filtration uh, is cutting, you know, getting, getting the job done when it comes to water quality. We know there's work to do <laughs> with uh, the algae and my mistake of uh, using erythromycin and not uh, doing a massive water change. Uh, we see the results of that. We have a plan to fix that, but uh, we're gonna make sure the most important thing, visually, they all fish look good. You know, I, I believe they're healthy, right? Uh, every, every, it's passing all of the sanity checks if you've been keeping fish for a long time. But let's see what the test kits say and uh, we'll check it out. All right, let me run these tests. Okay, the Zabrina is very curious of the test results, so let's uh, check it out. As expected, my goof up put us on the high end with, phos with phosphate. So by killing off all the cyanobacteria and uh, not displacing all that uh, phosphate from the water, we get hair algae. We all know phosphate is a big driver of hair algae, so to be expected. Uh, we jump over to the main uh, tests here. I don't test for pH. I never chase pH. Um, it's going to fluctuate on a lot of factors. Uh, there's a lot of people who've done who've done good jobs of, of describing that, so I don't worry about that. Uh, so ammonia, as we expect, it's zero on an established aquarium like this. Uh, nitrite, again, zero. Well-established aquarium. You know, there's no expectation of that, but the, of there being nitrite or ammonia in the water. But nitrate, where are we with nitrate? You're thinking, okay, phosphate's really high. I see a whole bunch of hair algae right there. Nitrate must be off the charts, right? No, nitrate, five to 10 parts per million. I mean, I actually wish it was a little higher. You know, that's where all the plants. So, you know, for people who follow this tank for a while, it was in balance for a couple of years uh, until I got the cyano and uh, so when I first got the cyano, I didn't have nearly as much water flow as I have now. I added a lot of water flow. I added, uh, I doubled, well, actually I tripled the amount of filtration. Uh, the water, well, amount of water passing from this system down into the sump filtration, tripled that. So um, that started to cure that. I got lazy. I used the uh, erythromycin and uh, I created a high phosphate condition, which then grew all this hair algae. So, uh, it's, uh, it's nice, to, I mean, it, yeah, yeah, it sucks to make a mistake. You know, it's not my first, won't be my last. I'm uh, working through it. Uh, it's gonna look a little ugly for a while. It's still very healthy. I'm gonna fix it. It's gonna actually make for a good little video series here because the next one, we'll take a look and you'll see there won't be this hair algae and it'll be because of the steps we're taking, that we have been taking. And uh, yeah, we'll show how oxygen, water flow, the amount of water flow passing through, you know, a system balanced with plants, you know, how that can maintain an aquarium. It also balanced with your fish load, you know, your producers of the nitrate and the phosphate. So yeah, we're gonna basically deal with this phosphate. So what's gonna happen now? All right, the dissolved oxygen is already doing its thing. The increased water flow is still doing its thing like it's always been uh, since it was put in, but we're gonna do a big water change. and. When I'm talking big, we're going to do a 2,000 gallon water change. We're going to bring it all the way down about here. And uh, we're going to displace a massive amount of phosphate. So then what we're going to do right after that, though, is we're going to test. We're going to, we're going to drain out that 2,000 gallons. We're going to do an immediate phosphate test. We're going to see what, you know, what does it test at? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we're going to fill it back up. Then we're going to do an immediate test. We're gonna see how much did we displace, you know, by doing that. And then of course, uh, we're gonna continue with, you know, what we're already doing, which is keeping dissolved oxygen high, keeping the, uh, well, like cleaning off that <laughs> drain up there so the filter can work efficiently uh, and keep dosing the plants. You gotta keep the plants going. You can see they're burning up nitrate, but they need fertilizer. So keep, it may sound funny, you got this hair algae, and you're gonna add fertilizer, absolutely. You're gonna be adding the fertilizer for the plants. We gotta keep, the biological process on the plants growing. Got to keep all, keep my sword plants popping off 30 babies a week, you know? That's that's burning up nutrients from the tank. That's what's keeping it in balance. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to, that's going to be uh, happening in the next video on the 3,000 gallon. But I think before that, we're going to pivot over to, 
the 220 gallon flooded forest aquarium and uh, like I said now that we have everything in here all the support fish it's going to be time to get the discus but what I'm going to do for the next video is we're going to do a deep dive we're going to take a look at all the fish we have in here we'll, we'll show how the, the DIY filter system is going and uh, we'll take a look at the growth of the plants and everything and then of course uh, we'll be putting in the discus that's going to be huge uh, I can't wait for that one uh, the discus are a bucket list fish of mine. I've wanted for a long time and I've never kept them. So uh, it's going to be my first time and I'm pretty, pretty excited about it. And even though this tank still has, you know, a lot to go, but I want to see these plants grow up way more. They are growing. The, the growth is there. It's good. Uh, I got the support fish I want now. Healthy, healthy rummy nose tetra from the wet spot. Kudos to the wet spot for that's not the easiest fish in the world to ship. So they did a great job. Uh, also, a little sneak peek there of uh, some Bolivian rams, also not necessarily the easiest fish uh, to ship, but uh, they did a great job. They came in, they've been here for, this is the third week, or two and a half weeks now? Or, no, two, yes, two weeks. They've been here for two weeks and they're doing great. No losses uh, at all. So, yeah. So next, so the next uh, video we'll do will be on the 220 flooded forest and maybe there'll be discus, uh, we'll see. And uh, then, we will of course pivot back to the 3000 gallon and we will see the results of the giant 80% spring water change. <laughs> One thing I can pretty much guarantee is going to happen is there's going to be a lot of breeding going. Whenever, because whenever I fill the tank back up, it's usually a few degrees cooler water, probably four to five degrees cooler than uh, what it is right now with all those lights heating it up and everything. Uh, so uh, I usually, well, honestly, every single time I've done a water change on this, they go breeding crazy. Uh, all the Oscars, the parasiculas, everyone, everyone pairs off. So now they also have a male-female pair of the Tomensis. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, so far, they've never showed any breeding activity, but uh, we'll see if that uh, change in water temperature like that, if that, if that kicks anything off. Okay. So I know I'm excited to see uh, the results of the big water change and see the phosphate level go down. Um, you know, again, depending on what happens, you're gonna go for along for the ride with me. If it works, then we'll continue down that path. Uh, I do believe it should work. It's worked in the past. That's the way the biology works in this situation. If it doesn't work though, for some reason, well, we'll you'll see that too, and we'll uh, figure something out. We'll address it. Uh, we're gonna get the 3000 back to looking beautiful. And those tops are gonna to be on for the next video on the 3000 gallon. I'm gonna get them painted. I'm gonna get them installed. I'm gonna get those tops cut. I'm gonna take them all outside get all that uh, twin wall polycarbonate panel tops. So they're all gonna be cleaned off, new again, get them cut, get them reinstalled, get them all notched out around all the equipment in the back so that there's no spots that uh, fish, like say, arowana could use to get out. And uh, yeah, it's time to start trying to find that arowana. Uh, so I'm definitely in the market for a couple of, you know, large, fairly large arowana. I prefer to get them close, you know, 18 to 20 inches would be ideal for these guys. I don't want them to be too small with the big bruisers we have in here. Uh, even larger maybe would be fine. So I'm on the lookout for those. And uh, yeah, the 3000 gallon is coming back to its former glory. Uh, one, one big water change at a time. So see you guys soon. And uh, if you like discus fish, definitely check out the next video. Flooded forest, we're getting discus.